Hey, it's Chris. Today we're gonna to be talking about Focus, which is a new feature from Apple in iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 that's kind of like do not disturb on steroids, meaning that it's there to help you concentrate on some specific tasks depending on context. That context could be the time of day, it could be the location that you are, but basically, if you enable a focus, you can enable certain apps, people, and notifications to show up on your devices, and it does work across your devices. And at the same time, you can also block certain apps, people, and notifications from being able to break into any specific focus. And you're actually looking at one of my focus modes right now, enabled on my iPhone and my iPad. This is my work focus. And I have to tell you, I've found it invaluable. Now, when you're in a focus, there's a little icon that appears that's associated with that focus. And you can change that icon when you set up your focus. And I'm gonna show you how to set your focuses up in just a minute. But that icon lets you know that your focus is on. You can see it on your Apple Watch. You'll see that same focus icon on the lock screen of the devices that you're using. And it even shows up in CarPlay. I've noticed, which is really cool. Now there's several ways to activate a focus mode. One way to do that is to swipe down from the top right corner on your device and on your do not disturb icon, long press on it and you'll see your different focuses and that'll let you know what focus you're in and you can also switch to a different focus from there. Of course, you can just activate a focus using Siri. That's pretty straightforward. Or again, depending on the time of day, you can have a certain focus kick in or if you show up at work, you can have a work focus kick in or when you get home, you can have a personal focus kick in. So it's really customizable. On the Apple Watch, if you swipe up while you're on a watch face and you long press on that do not disturb button, you can also see and switch into different focus modes from there as well. Now, I mostly have been working from home lately and for me, having a focus mode kick in by the time of day is what works best for me versus switching locations based on geofencing. Now, before we get into the setup, let me just give you a mini review here of the Focus system and tell you whether or not it's good, bad, worth it, et cetera. For me, it's been 110% worth it. Now, opinions seem divided out there, and I think the worst part about Focus is getting it set up. And I'm gonna admit, it was a pain to get set up only because of the time sink. I think you're gonna wanna block off 20 to 30 minutes at least to get Focus set up properly but again, I feel like it's 110% worth it. The reason that I love it so much is that my home screen changes, it adapts throughout the day. So let me show you what I mean on my iPhone here. I've got a work setup. So during work hours, I have three widgets that appear with the apps that I use most for work. So it's real easy for me to glance at my schedule, at my reminders, and if I need to film something using Filmic Pro and ProRes with the crazy camera setup here on this 13 Pro, I can easily get there, but then that's not an app that I'm gonna wanna use after work is over. You know, after the day's over, maybe I just want a simple screen that's letting me know how I'm doing on my sleep. That might encourage me to get more sleep. I've got a breakdown of my fitness, thanks to my Apple Watch, which maybe motivates me to do better tomorrow, or if there's time left in the day, to still go down and get a few more minutes in on the treadmill or elliptical. I can check out my latest audiobook very easily and dip back into that. And then I've just got a couple of apps that I might wanna review before I hit the sack. When I wake up in the morning, I've got a completely different home screen setup. I wanna know what's on my calendar and what reminders I have coming up. I've got a few apps that I can dip into, and here maybe I do wanna get a jump on work. So I've got a daily tech folder here with some of my work stuff. And yes, I wanna know how I slept the night before, so I've got the sleep widget hanging out. I've also got the reader app so I can catch up on any Apple news and the MyMind app, which is just one of my favorite note-taking apps of all time. It's really what I use more for personal stuff and where I keep all my work stuff in Apple Notes. And then I've got my fitness set up. So at the end of the day, when it's time to go down and depending on the day, hit the treadmill, the elliptical, or maybe hit the weights, then I've got a setup here that lets me get into the latest podcast. Again, my audio book. I've got my music hanging out right here. And I wish that the music widget had something other than just what did you listen to recently because I'm listening to totally different music when I'm working out versus when I'm actually working, when I'm typing. Those are very different types of music, but that's what shortcuts are for. Over here on the iPad for my work focus, I do have some shortcuts for some of the playlists that I like to listen to when I'm being productive. But basically, the custom home screen for my workout focus is anchored by my fitness widget here, so I can see how I'm doing on move and exercise rings. And then I've got audio and video with the YouTube app here, uh, entertainment basically that I can pipe in in just a second and get right into whatever I'm doing. And it's so convenient for me to have pre-thought out what I want to have show up on any given home screen 
during any type of activity, I end up saving some mental mileage by not having to travel around on my phone and pick out stuff on the fly. It's all just there, whatever I'm gonna need already, ready to go. And I went a little crazy. I think a lot of people are gonna have two or three focus modes tops, you know, when they're working, when they're not working, and maybe when they're driving. But sometimes I just wanna see the news. Other times I might just want my audio content at a glance. Sometimes I just want all of my notes that I wanna dip into at any given time. So you can see I put a lot of thought and effort into thinking about what I want to show up depending on the context of the day. And I actually went so far as to create an Apple Note when I was getting started and kind of think through what focuses I might want, what apps I might want, the people and notifications. I kind of planned that all out in an Apple Note before I got started because once I went into settings and got into the focus settings, it's kind of tricky to just start from scratch in the settings and think through everything on the fly. So that's one tip that I think really helped me was just kind of pre-plan things in a note before you get started. But before we get into the setup, I just wanna say what's really cool here is not just the productivity here and the actual focusing, which is really cool, but also it's my devices feeling like totally different devices throughout the day. They're not static, they're adaptable, and it feels like it's more personalized, a bit smarter than when I do things without the focus modes and everything's just permanently the way that it is. So let's go ahead and get into the setup, but I just wanna say if you're liking the vibe of this video, if you like encountering useful tips and, and seeing what you can do with your Apple devices, hit subscribe, especially if you don't wanna miss my what's on my iPhone and iPad videos that I've got planned and coming up shortly. All right, so to get set up, you're gonna go into settings and then tap on focus. And you can see I've got some focuses already set up. I've got a lot. But when you first get to this screen, there's gonna be some pre-populated focuses, some templates that Apple's got set up and ready to go. And you can just dive into those. And here's what the driving focus looks like, for instance. It's not enabled because I'm not driving, but it can detect when I'm plugged into CarPlay and turn itself on. And there's some cool settings that go along with that. So Apple's made it easy to get going with a gaming focus. If you don't want notifications popping in when you're trying to play your favorite game for an hour, then you can get that set up. Every time that you connect a Bluetooth controller, it'll just automatically snap into your game focus, for instance. There's also a fitness focus that Apple's pre-populated so that if you start a workout for Fitness Plus on your Apple Watch, then all your devices will jump into your workout or fitness focus. So there's some really smart things that you can do to trigger your focuses. Focuses, is that a word? Foci, whatever you wanna call it. But if you wanna start from scratch, let me just show you how it works on the iPad. You hit the plus up in the corner there and you can see custom, that's what we're gonna get into. When you tap on custom, you can choose an icon, that's what I was telling you about, and that's the icon that's gonna show up across all your different devices. So you wanna choose something that really fits whatever it is that you're doing. So I'm gonna leave it as the happy face for now and I'm just gonna call it custom for now and then I'm gonna change the color to orange and I'm gonna hit next. Now here's where things start to bog down just a little bit and where some pre-planning can really help you out. So here's where I can add some people that are allowed to break into this focus. So if there's a particular person or two that's important enough that they can message you, you don't mind, you wanna hear from them, if they need to get in touch with you when you're working out for instance, then you wanna add them here. So I'm gonna hit allow there and then you can say which apps that you want to allow for this particular focus. So it's gonna give you a list and you can just go through and select those right now. All right, and then I'll hit done. And so you'll see those icons show up. And there's also a place here where you can say allow apps not in your allowed list to send notifications if they're marked as time sensitive immediately. So there's some real fine tuning and tweaking that you can do here, even down to the notification level. And for this one, I'm not gonna enable that because I don't want anything breaking in. And we hit allow. Then you'll see the screen that says your focus is ready. It's on anywhere. So whenever you turn on your focus, it's turned on across all your devices. The caveat being at the time of this recording, the Mac OS version of Focus is not quite ready. It's not out there yet. I think it's gonna be out real soon, but it is cross device, which is nice to know. You can access it from your control center and you can also choose your home screen. That's what we're gonna do next. And again, this is the thing that excites me the most, letting my screen adapt and change automatically for me throughout the day. So if you want your home screen to change throughout the day, you go into home screen and you can choose here if you wanna hide your notification badges. Depending on the focus, that's really useful. Now the badge is that little red circle that appears and it can tell you if you have 10 unread emails, for instance. Well, that can be a nag. And if you're in personal time and you don't wanna be tempted to open up your mail app, you might wanna keep those off. 
But if you want your custom home pages, you gotta turn on custom pages, and this will let you select either one or multiple pages to appear, but you'll need to construct these custom pages ahead of time. Now, something to keep in mind is you can have multiple pages with the same app showing. So if you want Twitter on multiple home screens, you can actually do that. So let me show you how that works. And it's the same on the iPhone as it is on the iPad, but you wanna hold your finger down on the screen to get into jiggle mode. And then if you tap on the two little icons down here, or these little dots at the bottom, that's gonna show you which home pages you have open right now with that you've made. So let's say I wanna make a new one. I wanna swipe over and I want to go all the way over to my app library actually and pick out maybe a couple of apps that I want to bring over into this focus. Maybe this is just gonna be a gaming focus, okay? So I'll pull a couple of games over. What I've done is I've added in a huge Game Center widget here with some of the recent games that I've been playing. I've got an App Store preview here with some of the new uh, apps. Maybe they're gonna be games, maybe they're gonna be apps, but that might be nice to know. I've got a couple of my favorite games here. I've got Call of Duty, I've got Asphalt 9, and just a clock, because you don't wanna lose track of time when you're gaming, right? So now, if I go into jiggle mode and I tap on these icons, you can see I've got a third home screen added here. So if I get back into my settings and I tap on home screen, I say custom pages, I can go ahead and select that gaming page that I set up and that's it. That's basically the magic other than getting it scheduled. So I need to let this know when I want it to appear. So I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna say add a schedule or an automation. And here's where you can select either a time, a location, or when I open up a certain app. So for me, like I told you, I've been doing things more time-based because I know maybe my workday ends at five Maybe it's gonna be family time and eating for like two and a half hours. And then maybe I'll have a half an hour or something where I can game. So I might set that for a certain time at night. Location, unfortunately, you can't have this activate by rooms in your house quite yet. But you know, if you get home from work, and maybe the first thing you're gonna do is game, uh, then you could have it set up so that when you get home it activates, or app, I can come in and select something like Call of Duty so that when I launch Call of Duty, it's automatically gonna kick me into this gaming focus that I'm creating and block out all notifications, right? Or whatever I've got set up. I also wanna mention that this works really well in conjunction with app limits. So if you go into settings, screen time, and then to app limits, I've limited myself in three categories, news, games, and Twitter and Instagram specifically to make sure that I'm not wasting too much time there. Now, app limits, if you've forgotten about these or you're just not familiar in the first place, are where you can go in and say, hey, for these apps, I don't wanna use them more than this much time every day, or maybe just Monday through Friday, or just on the weekends, whatever it ends up being. And those two systems working together, the focus mode and the app limits, are what have really driven my productivity. The other thing that works really well with focus modes is the new notification summary. So if you go into settings, scheduled summary, and enable that notification summary, what you end up with is a bundling of your non-urgent notifications, and you're gonna receive them in a summary at times of your choosing. So this is for stuff that is not urgent, you know, time-wasting stuff, stuff I might care to see at some point, but that's not urgent. So I've got one set up on my iPhone, actually, not on my iPad, for early in the morning, kind of like around breakfast time, might see what notifications exist there. Then I have a dead time for non-important notifications until the evening time and I forget what time I scheduled it, but then at the evening time, if I wanna catch up on maybe all the podcast episodes that have come out for the day or something, all the things that would be considered distractions during my work time, then I can browse through them at that time. And I find that I actually look at those notifications in this summary more than I would if they just came during the day anyways, because then I'm just flicking them off the screen and ignoring them anyways. So the notification summary actually helps me pay more attention to the notifications that I do get uh, just because of the context. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're new around here, I've got a lot of iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 content already floating around. You can check out my video on how to get the most out of the new notes features in Apple Notes. Same thing for all the new tag features and smart folders in the Reminders app. So I've got some more for you to explore. Get yourself subscribed though for more useful Apple content. And don't forget, I've got a podcast. It's the Hey It's Chris podcast. It's supposed to come out every Friday. Usually it does. That's linked up down below. It's just kind of behind the scenes, kind of like hanging out with a friend, talking about Apple and news and behind the scenes stuff here. So if you want to subscribe, that is linked up down below. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.